Hi, it's Corrine for Wild Orchid Crafts, and today I am making another handmade journal or notebook. I'm starting out with my chipboard cut to nine by six and three quarters, and I edged all of it in white ivory chalkboard paint. I also have my papers cut down to the same size, and I'm using some Beacon Fabri-Tac to adhere my papers on. And I make sure to go all the way up to the edge and um, the entire piece of chipboard. I'm not shy with my glue whatsoever. I want to make sure that it's adhered down very well. And so I'm just pressing that down, making sure all the corners and the edges are adhered. And I'm also using my brayer to do so. And now I'm just doing the same thing on the back. I'm actually making two journals, but I'm only showing one on camera. So that's why I had four pieces of chipboard. I like to use graphics medium weight chipboard. So now that my papers are adhered, I'm using my cinch binding to put in my holes. And I'm asked if the cinch is easier than the bind it all. I've actually owned the bind it all as well. And the cinch is super easy to use very, very easy to use. I would highly suggest the cinch over the bind at all. So here's my inside pages, these notebook pages, and I've already punched them off camera. I'm adding them onto my wire binding and you simply press it down. And now I have a quick notebook that I'm going to embellish on the front. So I'm using this beautiful postcard that I purchased from Etsy. I will try to remember to put the link down in the description box. And I decided to back it with a piece of this glitter paper from the paper studio, which is from Hobby Lobby. So I'm not really measuring, I'm just eyeballing a piece of the glitter paper and giving myself a mat. I think the postcard is a three by five. So this is probably three and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then I also wanted to add a white piece. This one I'm adding one eighth approximately inch of a mat around it again just eyeballing it and I also am going to cut a piece of chipboard behind it because I did want to give it some dimension to my journal or to my um, matting so here's where I'm going to measure out and I'll cut the chipboard off camera I wanted it to stand out a little bit more so I printed out a piece of paper that is the same pink that's in those flowers on the paper and that way it gives it just a little bit of a border about a 1 8 inch of a border to make it pop off the page slightly so again using my Fabri-Tac I am going to adhere all my matting pieces down Fabri-Tac dries very quickly, but it does give you enough time to kind of move it around if you need to. And if you get it where you don't want, you can wipe it off. I love using Fabri-Tac. So now I pulled out some of my chipboard pieces from Wild Orchid Crafts. They have so many to choose from. And I just kind of looked through my stash and I pulled out a couple. Um, I don't end up using, I use this one here. This one is the Idea Doro sign frame, I believe. I'll make sure to link all the products down in the description box. And I wanted to add a little bit of the picket fence to it. So I'm using my dauber. You don't really end up seeing that in the end, but I did want to give it a slight color. So I'm just putting that on there and then I'll use my heat gun to dry it quickly. And then I decided I wanted to add some glitter. So I pulled out my Ranger embossing liquid and my sticky embossing powder and my Nouveau glitter. And I'm adding the embossing powder again, just dopping that on. I will pour over the sticky powder and it's just like embossing powder. You want to kind of shake it off. I'm going to put it on a clean piece of paper, add that back into the jar. That stuff lasts a long time. A small jar will last you a long time. And then you just want to heat set it just like you would embossing powder. As soon as you see it get shiny, then it gives it a sticky um, finish. So now I can add my glitter on it, kind of shake that off. Again, put the rest of it back in my jar. It does kind of make a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to use a Swiffer cloth. I saw Jennifer McGuire do that a long time ago and it works really well. And that just cleaned up my station or my, excuse me, my mat. 
So I'm just kind of setting that where I want it. I can see that the bottom part is not going to be shown, so I didn't want to waste that, so I just cut that off, and I will use that as well. But now the right side of my, my matting piece is a little bit higher than the left because of the chipboard. So I'm going to use the leftover pieces and add them under the left side. That way it's even all the way across. And now I'm just pulling out lots of gorgeous flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts. There, if you follow me at all, you know that I absolutely am in love. They make any project that much better, in my opinion. And these, the pink flowers here and the smaller flowers are gorgeous. They're pretty flory flowers. I'm using the GM flowers and the anemone. anemone. <laughs> I always have a hard time saying that. And I'm just kind of tucking them throughout. And I also wanted to use some of the fabric flowers that Wild Orchid Crafts. I wanted to give it a little bit of a, a different texture to it, which I was really happy with these. Again, I'll be sure to list and link everything down in the description box. I hope you stop by Wild Orchid Crafts and check out what they have. And I will also list them on my blog if you're looking for a list of, of the products that I've used. So I'm just kind of setting everything around. I'm using the uh, baby pink and, and white wild rose flowers there. I'm just seeing if where I kind of want everything, just lightly placing it down. Nothing's been glued down. And I decided to add this flat back pearl trim to the edge there. Again, another one of my favorites from Wild Orca Crafts. And now I'm taking a photo of it so I can recreate it once I glue everything down. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my Fabri-Tac, add the pearl string. And again, I love how quickly it dries, but it does give you time to move it because I had to move it slightly just to get it straight. And here I'm adding those scrap pieces of chipboard on the back of my mat piece. That way it sits perfectly flush all the way across. And I'm going to have to move that piece here in a minute. So I'm just going to add my glue all the way to the back of that because I want to make sure it's adhered down well. Kind of place it where I want it. And then that piece of chipboard was getting in the way. So I'm just going to pull that piece off cut it a little bit smaller and move it over and then this way it won't be in the way but it'll it'll make sure that my piece is adhered straight down and i'm adding these flowers with hot glue i like doing that so much better because they adhere immediately i i don't like when they move around once i want to place it down i want it to stay so I'm just kind of tucking the fabric flowers on either side of those. Those pretty flory flowers were designed by a, a design team member from Wild Orchid Crafts and she did such an amazing job. They're so beautiful and they come in, there's a lot of them that come in the packages. So again, I'm just kind of tucking them around. And if you'll notice, it's a little bit different than how I first set it up, but that's what I like to do. I like to kind of set it up, take a picture of it, and then sometimes I don't ever even refer back to my picture, but at least I have a picture if I wanted to recreate it exactly how I set it out the first time. And this is similar, but I didn't even use my, my picture um, to follow it. I just kind of did what I liked at the time. So here I decided I wanted to pull out these blossom fabric flowers and I have some in pink but I didn't like the pink against the other flowers it didn't go too well so I'm going to put those away and I'm going to pull out the the um, white almond blossom flowers and tuck those throughout and those look so pretty hopefully you'll be able to see it I do give you a close-up here but also in the photos Hopefully you'll be able to see how pretty those look. And like I said earlier, I like to give them, it gives, it gives it a little bit of different texture. And now I wanted to cut this other chipboard piece. I didn't want any of that to go to waste. So I'm just kind of moving it around to see where I like it. And I really liked it at the bottom. I did have to pull up one of the flowers that was glued down to get that tucked under, but no big deal. I just re glued it once I got that chipboard piece in place. I just added a little more hot glue under there and retuck that flower back down. 
and there were two tiny pieces that I tucked towards the top. I didn't let any of that go to waste. And then it needed one more of the flowers there. I'm taking my heat gun to it because it gets rid of any hot glue strings. It just kind of makes them shrivel up and go away. Here are some flat back glitter balls, again from Wild Orchid Crafts, and I wanted to tie in that glitter paper that I used on the matting behind my journal card on the front. And this one here, I wanted to add a third one, but it was a little too big, so I've never tried cutting them before, and it was, it was a little tough to cut, but I was able to do it, and it worked out perfect. Again, that piece was a little too big, so I used the smaller piece, exactly what I was looking for, just a smaller piece to tuck right in there. I didn't want a full size. And now lastly, I am going to add some Nouveau drops. I was testing out the color to see if that's what I wanted to use. And I'm using the Rosewater Nouveau Jewel drops. They're a little bit translucent and it looks absolutely beautiful on this journal. So I hope you've enjoyed today's process. Check out the description box for all the links to Wild Orchid Crafts. And thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.